My son doesn't want half of my money because he feels it's too little, even though he'll get everything when I die. But he should have accepted, because now he ends up with nothing and his girlfriend is leaving him. I'm 62 years old and recently won the Lucky for Life lottery in Kansas. It's a pretty good prize, $1,000 a day for the rest of my life. Now, I know what you're thinking, wow, you hit the jackpot. And yes, I literally did. But let me tell you, winning the lottery isn't as wonderful as it seems, especially when family gets involved. Here's the situation. I have a son, let's call him William, who's 21. When I won, I thought I'd be generous and offered him a deal. For more context, William doesn't actually live with me since he moved out at 19 after getting a job at a local bank. But back to the story. I told William I'd give him the winning ticket if he agreed to give me half of the winnings for the rest of my life. After I pass away, he would get everything. Sounds fair, right? I mean, I'm the one who bought the ticket, and I'm his father. I thought it was a win-win situation, he would get a nice sum of money, and I'd ensure I'd be well taken care of in my later years. I even think I was generous because if we do a quick calculation, the total prize is $365,000 a year, so we both get $182,500. Even after taxes, it's an excellent sum, giving William the chance to have a good life. And when I die, he'd have an even larger income. We're talking about money that would practically make him upper class, and all without lifting a finger. I know that in his current job, he only earns about $44,000 a year, which isn't bad, but with my offer, he'd be earning four times that, and in the future, his income would multiply by eight. I thought it was a great idea, but when I told William, he said he needed a few days to think about it. I didn't understand why because it's not every day that someone tells you that you can literally win the lottery, but I gave him his space. After a few days, William comes back, and I expected him to tell me he was happy with my offer, but instead, he gave me a counteroffer. He said, Dad, I've been thinking about your offer, and I don't think it's fair. You could live another 30 years or more. That's a long time for me to wait to get the full amount. How about I give you 15%, and I keep 85%? That seems more reasonable to me. I was stunned. Here I am, offering him a golden opportunity, and he's trying to haggle with me. I mean, I'm his father. I've supported him his entire life, and I'm offering him part of what I've won, something I'm not obligated to share with him, and this is how he repays me. After that, I told him I'd think about it for a few days. I already knew my answer, but I was too angry to respond at that moment and wanted to cool off and think through my options. But wait, it gets worse. Somehow, my ex-wife Patricia, William's mother, found out about the whole situation. We've been divorced for years, but suddenly she thinks she's entitled to a share of the prize too. She's been calling and texting non-stop, saying things like, I raised William too, I deserve a part of that money. Honestly, I'm on the verge of breaking down. I never thought winning the lottery would cause so much drama in my life. I've always tried to be a good father to William, even after the divorce. Patricia and I had our problems, but we managed to raise William pretty well together. William grew up to be a good kid, or so I thought. After a lot of thinking and many sleepless nights, I made a decision. I told William the first was withdrawing my offer entirely. The ticket stays with me, and I'll be the sole beneficiary of the winnings. Well, William was furious. He's livid, saying I deceived him and that I'm being selfish. Patricia supports him, calling me all sorts of things I won't repeat here. They both say I've changed, that the money has gone to my head. But here's the point, I don't think I'm being unreasonable. This is my ticket, my money. I worked hard my entire life, and this is the first time I've had any real luck. Why shouldn't I enjoy it? I've tried to explain my perspective to William. I talked about all the plans I had, paying off my mortgage, setting up a college fund for his future children, my grandchildren, donating to charities I care about. I even mentioned that I plan to help him with a down payment on a house when he's ready. But he doesn't want to hear any of that. He's only focused on what he lost. Patricia's reaction has been even worse. She's bringing up old arguments from our marriage, saying things like, this is typical of you, always thinking of yourself first. It's like she's forgotten that we've been divorced for over a decade and that she has no right to my assets anymore. The whole situation has me questioning a lot of things. Was I wrong to offer the deal to William in the first place? Should I have kept quiet about my win? Am I being fair, or am I letting the money cloud my judgment? I've always prided myself on being a fair and generous person. I've worked hard my whole life, 40 years at the same company, starting from the bottom and working my way up to middle management. I've always paid my taxes, contributed to my community, and tried to instill good values in William. Now I find myself in a position I never thought I'd be in. My son isn't speaking to me, my ex-wife is threatening legal action, 
although I don't think she has any grounds for it and is just trying to intimidate me, and I'm wondering if winning this lottery is a blessing or a curse. I've tried to reach out to William to have a calm and rational conversation about this. I want to explain my point of view, make him understand that this isn't about loving him less or being greedy. It's about finally having some security in my golden years, about being able to do some good in the world. But every time I try to talk to him, it ends in an argument. He keeps bringing up the initial offer, saying I went back on my word. I try to explain that the offer was conditional on his acceptance, which he didn't give. Instead, he came back with a counteroffer that I found insulting. But he doesn't want to hear that. Patricia isn't helping at all. She's been filling William's head with all kinds of ideas, telling him that he has a right to the money because he's my son. She's even suggested that he explore legal options to challenge the winnings. It's absurd, of course, the ticket is now signed in my name, and I never signed anything promising William the money. But the fact that they're even considering that option hurts me deeply. I've started to wonder if I should have kept the news of my win to myself. Maybe, if I hadn't said anything, things would still be normal between William and me. We used to have a good relationship. Not perfect, of course, what father-son relationship is. But we could talk, joke around, watch football together. The irony of the situation isn't lost on me. Here I am, with a guaranteed income of $1,000 a day for the rest of my life, and I'm more stressed than ever. I should be celebrating, planning a comfortable retirement, maybe even taking that trip to Europe I've always dreamed of. Instead, I'm losing sleep, worried about my relationship with my son, and dealing with a vindictive ex-wife. I've talked to friends about this, and they all agree that I haven't done anything wrong so far. They even think that if Patricia had wanted a share of the money, she could have asked William for it, convincing him to take my offer. But now I can clearly see where he got his ambitious side from. I've considered donating everything to charity just to end all of this. But then I think about the security it could provide for my future, and I can't bring myself to do it. Especially now that I'm not sure I have a son who will take care of me in my old age. So here I am, a lottery winner, feeling anything but lucky. My son isn't speaking to me, my ex-wife is at war with me, and I'm questioning whether I made the right decision. So, am I the jerk for withdrawing my offer and keeping the winnings? Should I have handled this differently? I hope you all can give me some advice. Edit, wow, this blew up overnight. Thanks for all the responses. To answer some common questions. Yes, I have consulted a lawyer. The ticket is legally mine, and neither William nor Patricia has any right to claim it. No, I hadn't discussed specific plans for the money with William before making the initial offer. In hindsight, I should have thought it through more carefully. Patricia and I have been divorced for 12 years. Our divorce was finalized long before I won the lottery, so she has no legal right to the money. I appreciate all the advice and perspectives. This situation has been a real eye-opener for me. I'm going to take some time to reflect on everything that's been said here. Maybe, once things cool down, I can sit down with William and have an honest conversation about this. As for Patricia, well, that's a situation I'll deal with when the time comes. Thanks again, everyone. Who would have thought winning the lottery could be so complicated? Update 1. First, I want to thank everyone for the great advice you've given me, especially regarding how to use the money to ensure I'm taken care of in my old age and for the ideas on how to donate it. To clarify, for those not living in the US who might not know how these lottery payments work, you can choose between receiving a lump sum, calculated based on life expectancy, or opting for an annual payment. In my case, I chose the annual payment since I come from a family with good genes and expect to live longer than average. My calculations suggest this is the better option. It's a bit of a gamble that will only know the outcome of when it's too late to care, but there's also something tempting about knowing you have a fixed annual income you can count on. This gives me greater stability. The other option was to take the lump sum and invest it, but at my age, I'd rather avoid those complications. Once I made the decision to go with the annual payments, I started thinking about how I could use this money not just to improve my quality of life but also to help others. While I was initially focused on securing my future, I also wanted to find a way to give back to society. So, I began researching non-profit organizations to which I could donate a portion of my annual income. Many of you also suggested some great ideas in the comments. After thorough research, I've decided to donate a significant portion of my annual payment each year to two organizations that have caught my attention. The first is Hogar Seguro, an organization dedicated to providing shelter and assistance to homeless people in my community. I was deeply moved by the work they do to help people get off the streets, offering not just a safe place to sleep but also resources to help them rebuild their lives. In addition to providing housing, Hogar Seguro offers job training programs, counseling, and ongoing support to help these individuals find work and eventually their own homes. The second organization I've decided to support is Futuro Verde, 
a foundation that works on reforestation and forest conservation in various regions of the country. I've always had a special connection with nature since I was young, and seeing how forests and green areas have been disappearing over time has affected me deeply. Futuro Verde is dedicated to restoring degraded areas by planting native trees and educating local communities on the importance of environmental conservation. As I reflected on how to manage my money and plan for my future, I also started considering how and where I want to live in my golden years. After everything that's happened with William and Patricia, I realized that I don't want to be a burden to anyone, especially not to my son, with whom my relationship has become strained. So, I decided to look into housing options for seniors, specifically retirement communities, something I'd never considered before. To my surprise, I discovered that retirement communities have evolved a lot from what I had in mind. These aren't just places where elderly people go to spend their final years, many of these communities are like gated neighborhoods offering a wide variety of amenities and services. Some of the more exclusive options have golf courses, tennis courts, pools, and organized social and recreational activities to keep residents active and engaged. Best of all, many of these communities also offer on-site healthcare, ensuring I'll be well cared for without having to depend on anyone else. One of the options that has caught my eye is in Florida. I've always enjoyed warm weather, and the idea of living somewhere I can be outdoors, enjoy the sun, and stay active is very appealing. Florida also has the advantage of no state income tax, which means I'll be able to keep more of my money, allowing me to enjoy a better quality of life. With so many important decisions to make, I decided it was time to speak with a lawyer to ensure everything is in order. I not only want to structure my finances in the best way possible, but I also want to make sure that when I'm gone, my estate is distributed according to my wishes. My first priority is to ensure that my donations to non-profit organizations are well structured. I want the process to be as simple as possible and for the organizations to receive support without legal complications. Additionally, I want to set up a fund that will allow these donations to continue even after I'm gone, as I won't be able to spend all that money. I also want to discuss with my lawyer how to make sure my annual lottery income covers all my expenses, including housing in a place like this, especially as I get older. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, I want to discuss the best way to handle my inheritance. I own my home, and when I'm gone, there will likely still be money left from what I've saved throughout my life and from my lottery winnings, so I need to decide what to do with all that. I need to get all of this in order for my peace of mind, especially now that my relationship with my son isn't at its best. Update 2. I wanted to give you all an update about the recent visit from my son and ex-wife. After all the drama that has unfolded since I won the lottery, they finally decided to come see me. I didn't expect much from the meeting, but I wanted to at least be courteous and give them the chance to express their opinions. So, I welcomed them into my home and made some coffee. William was the first to speak. He started by suggesting that it would be good to put everything behind us and agree to split the prize into three parts, with him cashing in the ticket himself. He argued that at one point in our lives, we were all a family, and therefore it would be fair to share the money that way. It seemed like a noble attempt to resolve the conflict, but I clearly told him that I wasn't willing to do that. The atmosphere became tense after my initial refusal. William seemed to be searching for the right words to negotiate a solution. After an awkward moment of silence, he presented a new proposal, he would accept half of the prize and share it with his mother. I thought it was a better offer, but my answer was again no. I wasn't willing to give in to their demands. William, seemingly resigned, made one final offer, to accept only 25% of the prize. He argued that this was the least I could do as a father and mentioned that if he split that 25% with his mother, he would earn the same as he does at his current job at the bank, but without having to work. He thought this proposal was reasonable and fair and expected that I would finally agree. My response was firm and direct, I told him no. I explained that I had already claimed the prize and that 25% of the money was destined for charitable causes. I told them about the organizations I was going to help, but they didn't seem to care much. Additionally, another 25% of the prize had been reserved in a trust to ensure my stability in old age. The rest of the money, I plan to spend on traveling and enjoying life while I can. William and Patricia's reaction was predictable. They began to protest, calling me greedy and saying that, sooner or later, I should at least leave them something in the inheritance. Patricia, in particular, was very angry, accusing me of being selfish and not considering my son's needs. I tried to explain that my decision wasn't about being greedy, but about securing my future and supporting causes that really matter to me. I explained that the distribution of my inheritance is already settled and that my lawyer has taken care of everything. I also told them they shouldn't worry because, essentially, they aren't going to receive anything. I suppose they liked that response even less, but there was no way I was going to change my mind. I gave my son a chance to receive a really good reward, and he rejected it out of greed. 
But now, according to them, I'm the greedy one, so they won't receive anything from an old, greedy man like me. In the end, they left my house, but not before saying they were going to cut me out of their lives. I didn't quite understand that comment, since my ex-wife had already cut me out of her life. Once I stopped paying child support, because William is an adult, we haven't had any contact, so I don't think our dynamic will change much now. As for my son, well, I've already come to terms with the fact that I can't rely on him, which is why I've started planning for my future. Although this situation affects me as a father, I don't want to pay for a relationship. I want my son to have a relationship with me because he loves me. If that's not what I'm going to get, I don't think there's much worth fighting for here. Update 3. I wanted to share a new update about the situation with my son, and I'm not sure how to interpret it, so I thought it would be best to give you a full picture of what's been happening. A few hours ago, I received a call from William. He told me that his girlfriend had a serious medical emergency and was now in the hospital. According to him, she suffered a broken arm and had to undergo surgery. The situation is complicated because his girlfriend doesn't have health insurance, and according to William, the hospital is demanding $16,000 to cover the medical expenses. William asked me for immediate financial help, requesting that I transfer the money to pay the hospital bill. He said he'd prefer if I sent the money directly to him, as he would take care of everything. Oddly enough, despite the urgency of the situation, William didn't offer any additional details or provide any documentation or proof of the emergency. He just insisted that I transfer the money so he could resolve the situation quickly. I have to admit, I have my reservations. After everything that's happened recently, I'm not entirely sure if this emergency is real or if it's another attempt to get money from me. Don't get me wrong, I'm willing to help in genuine situations, but I also have to protect my own interests and ensure I'm not being deceived. I suggested to William that I could go to the hospital myself to pay the bill directly. I thought this could be a way to verify the truth of his story and ensure that the money was being used for the right purpose. However, William rejected my offer and insisted that it would be better if I transferred the money to him, and he would handle everything. This refusal raised another red flag for me, as it seemed like he was trying to avoid direct verification. Instead of agreeing to his request, I told William that he could either accept my proposal or seek help elsewhere. I wasn't willing to transfer money without proper confirmation of the emergency. William, visibly frustrated, responded that he would go ask someone else for the money. I'm not sure if this is a tactic to pressure me or if he's genuinely looking for alternatives. The call happened earlier in the day, but I've only now had time to sit down and write this update. It's late at night at the moment, and since the situation has me concerned, I've decided to wait until the next morning to make a final decision. My plan is to call William's girlfriend, with whom I've always had a good relationship, to ask her directly how she's doing and confirm if there really was a medical emergency. I want to know if the situation is as serious as William described and if she truly needs urgent financial help. However, since it's late at night, I don't want to disturb her if she's trying to rest or recover, so I'll wait until the morning to make the call. I find myself in a difficult position, and I'm trying to handle the situation as prudently as possible. I don't want to deny help if it's needed, but I also need to be cautious to avoid being manipulated. I hope to have a clearer idea of the truth tomorrow, and I'll keep you updated on how this situation develops. Update 4 after last night's conversation with William and my doubts about the authenticity of his emergency, I called William's girlfriend today to get more information directly from the source. The call turned out to be quite revealing, considering what she told me. I've always thought of his girlfriend as a reasonable person, and I've had a good relationship with her. When she answered, I explained that William had informed me about a medical emergency involving a fracture in her arm and that he had asked me for a significant amount of money to cover the expenses. Upon hearing my explanation, she seemed somewhat surprised and concerned. First, William's girlfriend confirmed that she had indeed fractured her arm, but what William had said wasn't entirely accurate. According to her, surgery wasn't necessary, as William had claimed. The fracture was treated conservatively with a cast and rest, and she's now at home recovering. This directly contradicted William's story, in which he mentioned that she had undergone surgery. As for health insurance, she told me that she does have coverage, and while her policy doesn't cover all the hospital expenses, the situation isn't as dire as William made it seem. The amount left to pay isn't $16,000, as he mentioned, but closer to $1,200. This made it clear that William had significantly exaggerated the figure to get more money than they actually needed. She also told me that William had mentioned to her that he would ask to borrow money from me to cover the remaining $1,200. However, she knew nothing about the $16,000 he had mentioned to me. During our conversation, William's girlfriend seemed genuinely embarrassed and worried about the situation. She assured me that it wasn't her intention to cause any problems and that she understood if I couldn't help them financially. She also mentioned that their financial situation was tight, 
but they were managing as best they could. She thanked me for taking the time to call and clarify the situation and apologized if there had been any confusion. She also shared something even more interesting, my son had been thinking about buying a house. While they'd been saving for the down payment, the house they're interested in requires a $30,000 down payment, and they've already saved about $17,000. This explains why their finances are tight since they had to dip into their savings. It also makes sense that the $16,000 William asked for could have been intended to cover the rest of the down payment. At this point, I'm not sure what to think. On one hand, William's girlfriend seemed genuinely embarrassed by my son's actions, but this could also be part of a larger deception. As I mentioned before, I've always considered her to be a kind-hearted person, but now I'm unsure. If she were part of a manipulation scheme, she might have continued with the ruse. However, she sounded quite distressed. In any case, she didn't even ask me for the $1,200, and I'm not planning to help them. But I do intend to visit William's girlfriend soon to see how she's doing. This whole situation has left me feeling conflicted, and I'm still processing everything that's happened. I'll keep you updated as I learn more. Update 5. Today, I decided to visit William and his girlfriend's apartment to see how they were doing. I was concerned about the discrepancies in their stories and thought it would be better to see things for myself. After what his girlfriend told me in our last conversation, I wanted to ensure there were no more misunderstandings. When I arrived at their apartment, I found no one was home. I knocked on the doors several times, and when I didn't get a response, I decided to try contacting his girlfriend again to find out where they were, since I thought she needed to rest. When I finally managed to reach her by phone, she explained that William and she had recently had a fight. The situation escalated to the point where she decided to go to her parents' house to distance herself from William. I was surprised to hear this but understood that the situation was more complicated than I had imagined. I then decided to visit her parents' house to see if I could talk to her and clarify things once and for all. When I arrived at her parents' house, she welcomed me. I saw her with the cast on her arm, confirming that she had indeed fractured it, but there was no surgery as William had claimed. His ex-girlfriend was clearly distressed by the situation and explained to me that after our conversation a few days ago, her relationship with William deteriorated further. She told me that they had had an intense argument about money, and due to his increasingly persistent and manipulative behavior regarding the lottery money, she decided to end the relationship. She didn't want anything to do with someone who would go so far just for money. His now ex-girlfriend apologized on behalf of William for the confusion and for his obsession with the money. She assured me that it wasn't her intention to cause problems and that she never thought the situation would escalate to this extent. I wished her a speedy recovery and thanked her for her honesty. The conversation helped me understand the situation better and see that, despite all the drama, his ex had acted sincerely and with integrity. I felt relieved to know that the money was not really needed and that my decision to stay out of the situation had been the right one. Finally, I said goodbye to his ex and her parents and wished her a quick recovery. While I'm not glad about what happened to my son's ex-girlfriend, at least it has shown me a side of my son that I hadn't imagined before my posts. If I had accepted that first offer, I don't know what might have happened with him or what he might have become.